Welcome back to Waters Ironworks. We are going through the Bonner National Curriculum again. Section 1.13, making a monkey tool. So um, I'd never made a monkey tool before. Uh, conceptually, not that tricky, a lot like a hammer. Um, but I did want to show you guys, uh, it took me a couple tries, own up, where I uh, had some challenges, share what those were with you, uh, so that as you're making this tool, it's something to keep in mind. The very first time I tried making a monkey tool, this is some one inch square mild steel bar. Um, had a couple things go wrong with it. The main one is too close to the edge. Um, so when I went in and I did my drift, it wound up really pushing these corners, these edges out a lot. It's getting a lot of bad fish lipping going on. Um, I tried to fix that in a couple different ways wound up uh, overdrawing the cheeks here too, thinning those out more than I should have. Um, and you can see what that led to is me having a section up here that my drift was never going to smooth out and correct. So eventually said enough is enough. Let's uh, start over uh, with a fresh piece of steel and give it another shot. Attempt number two, uh, went really well. It's um, the flaws it's got little off maybe on um, the straightness of the hole. That's not a huge deal. Cheeks came out a lot better. Front end length I was reasonably happy with. It's maybe a little bit long. Um, things did go pretty badly when I tried to drill. Uh, using the drill press with an unsteady table just didn't get it centered well. Um, and with the, the extra length and the hole not centered well, said I'm gonna start again. The video that you guys are gonna see though is me making attempt number two here. I did attempt number three off camera. Um, so as you're watching that video, my recommendations, uh, just cut it a little bit shorter than I cut my, um, my piece. Don't draw it out quite as much. Attempt number three, I am very happy with, you can see it's quite a bit shorter here, nicely centered uh, hole, um, and everything looks really good on this one. This one is ready to go, minus the final step in this, which is uh, case hardening it. So I've got some cherry red compound right here, which is a case hardening compound. I'm gonna let you guys watch me making attempt number two, and then when we get to the end of that forging, we're going to cut, we'll come over to uh, attempt number three, and we'll go ahead and case harden this one. All right, so we're going to do this a little ways back here. Look lined up. Take a look, see if we're good with that. I think that looks pretty even. So I'm trying to make sure it's nice and straight and even. Start driving this down. I'm going to pull it out reasonably frequently, cool my punch off. Flip it over. Got a flat spot here on the back. Come in and line up with that. Let's get it hot one more time. Give it a couple hits on that deep side again.
Now it works a little bit better actually as the steel cools. Okay. It'll help shear. I'm just getting blinded by the sun coming in the back door. Give it a couple more heats. Might have been a little off on. Flip it over. Let me look down. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, give me back to the other side. All right, a little more heat. There we go. That slug is loose in there. Put it over the uh, other side again. Pull it forward a little bit there. That's right there. All right, other side. Let's just knock that out. It's still hanging on. Excellent. All right, let's get that hot again and we'll uh, drift it. You can see how much heat this punch is picking up. We're well into the six, 700, 800 degrees up there. Straw color, three, four, or four, 500 degrees coming back. All right, flip it over, let's knock it out, reheat. Uh, pull it up and put this side face up. This side? Other way. Yeah, let me just give that. All right, back in the hardy hole. Let's knock it through. All right, back in the fire. We'll take one more heat, go another direction. Here we go. Right there, it's stuck under the hardy hole. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just looking at this. This looks pretty good. We're pretty even on the sides here. Uh, we've got enough material here to draw this out a little bit. Um, or we may actually drill our hole through this side, cut this back even a little bit further so that we've got a handle on it. Uh, let's go ahead, if you wouldn't mind quenching it, I'm going to take it back to the saw and uh, cut it off and we'll be able to start working it. So we'll be using our uh, Marvel draw cut saw here. Absolute beauty of a machine to cut that piece off. Obviously, we could do this on the hot cut, but we have this marvelous, uh, like, 1908 invention. Uh, this is an, a newer one than that to help us out, so why not take advantage of it? Boom. So we're going to come in, put a bit of a taper on this. Be the struck end. Draw it down a little bit. Be careful to 
Stay away from the eyes. From the eye. Just so I make sure I don't mess it up as I'm doing this forging. So really not the right tongs for this. Pretty much where I want it to be. Do a little bit of cleanup here. All right. Uh, I'm gonna get this hot again. Uh, like I've said before, my files out here are really pretty terrible. It goes a lot easier when this is warm. I'm just taking in all those corners a little bit. This is mild steel as we learned in our last video, that can't harden when we quench it. So let's cool this down and start thinking about how to drill our hole in it. First impressions. Uh, overall, it looks pretty good. Apparently not 100% straight still. Wound up being a little off center, um, uh, which isn't ideal, but for a first attempt and with the drill setup we got out here, not terribly surprising to be honest. So you've just seen me finish uh, forging out attempt number two. Like I said, um, we're actually gonna be hardening, case hardening attempt number three here. What I've got for that case hardening is cherry red. It's a hardening compound. The way this process works is I'm gonna heat up the steel until it's a cherry, a bright red color. What I wanna do is get past that transformation point to where the steel is starting to form um, austenite, move out of its ferrite stage. Once it forms an austenite, it is able to absorb a lot of carbon in it. This compound will help the surface just the very surface of the steel absorb that compound or the uh, carbon then we'll heat it back up to cherry red hold it there for a, a little bit um, and then we'll take it out and we'll do a water quench on it and what that should leave us with is a tool that is um, almost all mild steel but the surface of it will be um, a medium carbon sort of steel and that'll help it resist deformation and things like that so when we're doing our tenons and hammering on it, it's going to help protect this area from deforming. The mild steel behind it will provide some structure. And so just that thin carbon steel um, will give us the strength that we need. So let's get this hot and then we'll coat it in cherry red. Got this nice and hot here. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna cover all the front surfaces of it here with the cherry red compound. Especially this very front and into that hole. I haven't done this very often, so I may be putting on more than is needed here. If anybody is an expert in case hardening, 
has any tips on how much compound to put on, let me know. But my theory is a little extra is probably going to be less of a problem than too little. So I think we've got a nice coating there. Let's go ahead and heat that back up. So we've got it in the fire. I've let it soak just a little bit up to a good temperature here. I'm gonna pull this out straight into our quench tub. Cool this down, try and get it as hard as we can here. It's important to note that the layer of high carbon steel that you get when using compounds like this is extremely thin. Um, any grinding, anything like that that you need to do, um, smoothing stuff out ahead of time, you're going to want to do that before you do the case hardening process. Let's take a look though, grab a file. Yeah, and that's skating pretty nicely. Compare it to the back end. And it's definitely biting a little bit more on the back end than it is here on the front. So I think we have successfully case hardened this. Let me go just clean it up and wire wheel off all the gunk and we'll take a final look at it. We got it cleaned up, got all the uh, cherry red compound off with the wire wheel here. And uh, I'm pretty happy. Might have singed it uh, just a little bit while it was soaking in there. Um, got a little hot maybe, but overall, very happy with how this came out. We've got a nice case hardening on it, I think. Um, and this will be ready as we start going into making some tendons for the final projects. Up next, we are going to do a handheld uh, top fuller and a Z-shaped bottom fuller. Both extremely uh, easy projects if you've come this far along. And I think after that, we're gonna quit pretty quickly be getting into some forge welding um, and the, the final project, so. See you again soon. Thanks so much.